Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale vehicle unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at the new and hopefully improved Tumblr. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. Now the box art is significantly different as compared to the previous version that I've already reviewed on the channel. Before it was a black box that encompassed the foam core and you had some wireframe images of the Tumblr and the Batman logo. This time you just have the foam block and you have this cardboard cover that simply rests on the surface. Underneath that you have the instruction manual. Now interestingly enough, mine wasn't stuck down or secured in any way, it's literally just free floating. It is a double sided print with the instructions on one side and an image on the other. Now I think this might be the first time ever that I've seen velcro straps on anything from Hot Toys. But it does make a ton of sense here. Number one, it's a very expensive piece. Number two, it's a very big piece. Having tape running all the way along the edge of the foam block just wouldn't be feasible. Velcro makes, as I said, perfect sense. And then we have the tumbler itself. Now there is a ton of plastic wrapping and there are two specific points where you're supposed to lift it. Make sure you aren't putting any pressure on the wrong areas because some pieces are a little fragile. Here we have the tumbler itself. Now you'll notice that there aren't any fins or additional attachments on it just yet because I did want to discuss how they come packaged. They are just simply in some clear plastic clamshells. Now you do have multiple Multiple layers. There are three for each side. These were the first things to break on the previous tumbler. They were super thin, super fragile, so hopefully Hot Toys have made some improvements to the sturdiness. Now in order to see where they go, you have to of course check the instruction manual. I will have them laid out in the exact same format as the manual does, so if you follow along, being careful mind you, you should be able to get an idea of where these pieces are supposed to go. Now starting off with the ones up top, you will have to situate the little struts because out of the box they do lay flat. Now it does recommend pegging in the side first, then the ones closer to the engine, and lastly the little piston underneath. Once you do that, you should have a little bit of movement. Next up we have a very similar piece that simply goes behind the one you've just installed. Once again, the exact same process. Peg it in on the side first, then on the internal section, and lastly peg in the strut. If it does move up and down, then you know you've done it correctly. Coming around to the back, you do have to pull down the little cylindrical section which then slides into this piston. You push that in, and it was very, very difficult to install on mine. I did have to fight with it just a little. Up top, you slide it in and then peg it around the edge. After you've done that, once again, it can move up and down. Lastly, you have the mud guards. They very simply peg in, no fuss whatsoever. On the inside, you do have these two little joysticks that peg in quite satisfyingly with a nice click. Then, around the back, these are the final pieces. Some little struts that magnetize onto the back of the thruster. While we are back here, we may as well discuss said thruster. It looks great. It's painted with a base silver, then there's some black wash over the top, plus a very subtle amount of purple as well, kind of as though it's been superheated, which makes perfect sense considering that it is a literal jet engine. You do have some real metal springs for the suspension and a couple of dials up top. They are fully detailed and printed. Now, as for the tyres, these feel a little different compared to the original. There's a lot more squish here and a little bit of flex. It's kind of as though there is an air gap between the tyre and the plastic wheel. Now, they do lock in the exact same way as the 1.0. You do have these red pins which you simply remove and then the wheels can roll freely. 
I personally love the wheel locking mechanism, it means this isn't going to roll around in your display if for some reason you happen to have some kind of earthquake. Now, a hidden detail that you might not have otherwise noticed is that tucked in behind the wheels hidden by the mudguards are some gold fuel tanks. This is a very nice hidden detail, they're fully painted and they look suitably metallic. Again, it's something that I never even really noticed on the original but I did spot it with this new one. Now the overall form factor is exactly the same as the previous versions. It does however feel a little heavier, which means it does also feel slightly sturdier. It is still made of the same black unpainted plastic, which means you aren't going to have any scratches because there is no paint to chip away. That for me works perfectly. Because this thing is so big and it's going to take up such a significant amount of space in the collection, you're probably going to have stuff posed up on top of it, inside it, and around it. So chances are other figures are going to make contact with it. So the fact that you can't actually scratch it up super easily definitely checks that box for me. Now in terms of the LED lights, you do have a ton. Up the front, on top of the canopy, and behind that as well. But unfortunately, the one key area where I thought the last tumbler was lacking was the thruster. This one still does not have any LEDs up the back. I was absolutely adamant that Hot Toys were going to do that because having that thing lit up, maybe even flickering in the display, would have been a very nice touch. Don't get me wrong, the LEDs that this thing has are super bright and they get the job done just fine. They do have a slight bluish tinge to them, which does look to be accurate to the movie. Unfortunately though, there aren't any LEDs inside the cockpit, which we'll discuss more in just a second. When you have other companies making officially licensed 1-6 scale vehicles like Jazz Inc and they are doing LEDs in the cockpit, Hot Toys, I think you all need to do it too. It wouldn't have been a super hard thing to add, and because this is supposed to be a new and improved version, I think collectors would have been very happy to have a couple of those screens light up on the inside. But nevertheless, as I said, I still do like the LED light up feature. The switch is accessible and it takes three AAA batteries. That means you can use big lithium batteries so they aren't going to leak. No annoying button cells, I would have loved a plug-in to have this lit up all the time, but AAA does work quite nicely. Seeing as though I literally just mentioned it, we may as well talk about the cockpit. It does open in the exact same way in multiple stages. If you are curious how to get this done, Number one, check this video. Number two, please consult the instructions. It will show you the safest way to do it. Now, the inside isn't any more or less detailed compared to the 1.0, which I'm perfectly fine with. The only complaint I would have is the lack of LED screens. I do like the silver dry brushing along the track where that central column would go, and I do like the little metal grate on the right side. You, of course, still retain the two seats, one for the driver and one for the passenger. Now, the instruction manual does specifically call out the MMS 595, which is the new version of the Batman Begins suit. Now, I don't have that figure because at the time of filming this video, he hasn't been released yet. But I do have the DX-19 and I do have the Toy Fair exclusive Batman Begins figure. So we will be trying to fit them inside and seeing what that looks like. You also do have a couple of moving pieces in here. They are a little bit fiddly to get to, but you do have a movable screen in the central armrest plus the throttle lever and you can move the steering column up and down. Now unfortunately it can't pivot all the way around like it does in the movie, but you can actually turn the steering wheel or the yoke, plus you can move it forward and back. This is all more so for accessibility to install Batman inside and not necessarily a play function. Now this is something I was far too scared to try with the original one, but I thought to hell with it, let's just give it a go. We have a new version of this begin suit coming anyway, so if I scuff it up and destroy it, then so be it. At least you all will see what this looks like. 
This, for the most part, looks okay. He fits in there perfectly, and yes, you can close the cockpit. You'll see that in a moment. But I would not leave him in there for a long period of time. It would absolutely destroy this rubber suit. Put him in there, take your pictures, then take him right out. Now, his ears do sit rather high. I would recommend moving the cockpit section, the canopy, all the way up and the steering column all the way forward to give yourself the maximum amount of working space, because otherwise it's going to be far too difficult to wedge him in there. Now, as I said just before, yes, you can close the canopy, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of having Batman inside, because you can't really see him. The windows are too tinted. Now, I was going to try the DX-19 in the driver's seat, but I couldn't get him into a comfortable sitting position. He's still brand new and I absolutely love him, so I didn't want to ruin my figure. But if you want to try with yours, then all the power to you. I think he looks just as good standing inside the tumbler or standing next to it. In my display, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to use the DX-19 with this beast or if I'm going to use the begin suit, but only time will tell. Do let me know what's your preference down below. Do you think the DX-19 suits the Batpod just a little bit better, or do you think he works quite nicely with this tumbler? I honestly could go either way. Now I know it's technically a little bit more accurate to have the begin suit with the tumbler, although he did drive this in the Dark Knight as well. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Batpod, yes this is the new 2.0 version, and the new tumbler together. And as you can see, the tumbler is significantly bigger, as it should be. Technically, in the movie, the Bat Pod was a part of the Tumbler. After the Batmobile is destroyed, the Bat Pod morphs out of it. The front wheel of the Bat Pod is actually the exact same shape and size as the Tumbler, which is accurate to the film. Overall, I think they look absolutely fantastic together. Now, we didn't ever see them side by side in the films because, as I said, the Bat Pod is part of the Tumbler, but in the display, you can totally do that. As a little bonus, I did want to try out the DX-19 on the Batpod, just while we have it out here. I know I'm not trying to steal the Tumblr's thunder, but this was too good of an opportunity to pass up. As you can see, the DX-19 looks great. He also has a new and improved body with better articulation, so he can sit on it far better. This, however, was still not the easiest thing to accomplish. I do have his cape off to one side so you can see that, yeah, his knee is almost touching the knee guard, and I do have his foot on the pedal. Now, you do have to lean him over significantly and tilt his head up, which does exacerbate the long neck issue. But the question was, can the DX-19 fit on the bat pod, even with the larger body? Yes. Absolutely he can. I'm pretty sure they were designed to go together. Now just wrapping up on the new and improved Tumblr. The question was for me at the start of the video, what exactly has been improved? Now so far I think that number one the LEDs are a little brighter and number two the build quality feels sturdier which was absolutely the number one thing that plagued the original release. This one does still have the moving flaps, but they don't feel like they are going to snap off. The black unpainted plastic is relatively simple, but it is accurate and it is very durable. I am super excited to get the new Batman Begins figure and try him out inside this tumbler, but until then, I'll stick with the Toy Fair exclusive one. Now, I got my tumbler from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12-month installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.